That's your biggest problem in life. Your biggest problem in life is that somebody is wearing gloves. My word, you must be rich and your relationship must be going well and you must have the best job ever. I thought, once I ever worried about somebody wearing gloves in the gym. Time up, Bought a hole here. Thank you for joining me as always. And I get it. When you go on the internet today, you are bombarded with fitness information. You should do this. You shouldn't do this. Oh my gosh, you've absolutely failed. And the thing is, there is a lot of good advice out there that actually, if you don't want to do it, you can just totally ignore it. And you're still going to be able to head into the fitness palace of love and have a good session. So yes, here's 10 pieces of great gym advice you can totally ignore. Number 10, as to grass squats. Now, straight away, the comment section has gone mad because form when it comes to squats is quite a controversial topic, namely because a lot of people in gyms do squats like this. Don't do it. If you are only able to get that range of motion when you're doing squats, take some weight off the bar. Do not ego lift when it comes to squats. And I've told this story before, I'll tell it again. I was doing this, so I get it. I have fallen foul to this hurdle in the past too. And what I did was I was in a gym in Bournemouth. How I remember that, I don't know. I went in and I started squatting with the bar and I made sure I all the way down and I made sure I came all the way back up. I then put a couple of 20s on. I did that for a few weeks, 40s, 60s, etc., etc., until I could go back to what was reasonable for me, but also I had decent form. Now, the internet is always yelling at you going, if you don't go ass to grass with your squats, you're a terrible human being. And don't get me wrong, if you're capable of doing that, you absolutely should because that extra, so when you go below parallel, my word, does everything kick into gear? But you don't have to do this. Parallel is fine. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying it's worse. But I know a lot of people don't like going down that far because they get a little bit scared and they panic, which I understand, completely terrified of the leg press, which kind of ties into all of this. So no, you don't have to do it. Now, do you have to go to at least parallel? I would say yes. These weird three-quarter squats you're doing, and they're not helping you, they're not helping me, they ain't helping your auntie Jean, who somewhere when that does happen, she's like, oh, because she knows something bad is going on. But no, I, you can still get really good muscular leg development as long as you go parallel with squats. So if you don't like going all the way down, don't do it. Number nine, never use straps and never use wraps. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of people use wrist straps when they're doing things like deadlift because it helps their grips. And of course, when you're doing squats, you can wrap up your knees, which not only helps you lift the weights, but it will protect your legs as well. Now, I get why people say that you should stay away from this because of course your lift is going to be more pure, right? And if you enter some kind of competition, some kind of lifting competitions or strength competitions, they may ban you from using wraps and straps depending on what the competition is. But we ain't talking about competitions here. We are talking about going in the gym. So if you want to lift more, use wraps and straps and if you want to protect yourself a little bit we'll do exactly what i just said why do you care if somebody's looking at you going oh man look at that guy he's such a wuss because he's wrapped his wrists up in tape or whatever you want to say it's like people that wear gloves i prefer not using gloves because all this weird funny dirty stuff i want to feel the steel and also i actually find it more difficult in gloves but there are memes on the internet going that guy is such a wuss because he wears gloves that's your biggest problem in life your biggest problem in life is that somebody is wearing gloves my word you must be rich and your relationship must be going well and you must have the best job ever. I thought once I ever worried about somebody wearing gloves in the gym. Not true. I bet when I was younger, I did something I want to be in cool with the internet. But don't worry about it. Remember, when you go into the gym, when you go into the fitness palace of love, you want to leave there ensuring that you've achieved progressive overload and ensure that you have been intense. And if using a wrist strap or if using a knee wrap is going to help with that, you should do it. I do it. I use VersaGrips Pro. Now, VersaGrips Pro costs a hell of a lot of money, but they are the, one of the best, uh, what would you call it apparatus no that's not right equipment what am i trying to say here whatever that word is i don't know why you watch these videos either whatever that word is they are one of the best gym insert here that i have ever bought so if you can afford it i highly recommend them number eight the push pull legs routine i will always back up push pull legs it is the greatest thing that i've ever done in terms of changing up my routine i, I was doing a bro split you know at one point and then i got a trainer and he said no no no. monday tuesday wednesday push pull legs take off thursday then friday saturday sunday push pull legs repeat and my word it changed my training it really did and for the first time in years i started to see progression again so if you're asking me for my opinion do i think you should choose that one yes yes i do and if you go back through my old videos you will find more information about this but once again do you have to do it have a guess what i'm gonna say 
no. And the reason it's no is because I would rather you just went to the gym. And it's this that kind of inspired the list. I was on a website the other day and they were all like, if you're not doing push pull legs, you may as well stay at home. And I was like, that's a stupid thing to say. I would much rather you were training arms every day than not going to the gym at all. So if you like the quote unquote bro split where you're doing back and buys, chest and tries, shoulders, <laughs> legs, or maybe you're doing back stop, shoulder stop, arms, legs, whatever the hell you're doing, that's what you should do. It may not be the most beneficial in terms of getting the uh, maximum amount of gains, but if you prefer it and it actually tempts you to go to the gym, pick that one. Always pick the one that gets you excited about the gym. Now, if you have one of those brains where you can do the stuff that you hate and you still want to go, then yes, pick push-pull legs, but never listen to anybody who ever says it's either this or nothing. That's not what bodybuilding is. Obviously, science, when it comes to lifting weights, is so important, but it actually comes down to the crutch of the thing and how you're going to achieve better and bigger results. That ain't science at all. That comes down to this, and that comes down to this. And in case you are listening to this and not watching, I just touched my heart, and I just touched my head, which, to be fair, yes, actually doesn't make any sense. Number seven is you've got to use supplements. We will try and breeze past this one because it's an old one, but a good one. No, you don't need supplements in order to get the physique that you want. Can they? help yes are they going to completely transform what you're doing no and in fact if somebody put a gun to my head right now i'd be like dude calm down we're just talking about bodybuilding here but a multivitamin is good omega-3 tablets are good if you struggle to sleep maybe something like zma but my word why did i even say that you don't need zma that was a dumb thing that i said and that's probably probably it if we throw protein in there which is a supplement sure but again you can eat whole foods so i would say a multivitamin and omega-3s. And even then, do you need them? No. Oh, and creatine. Creatine pretty good. Number six, you got to eat every two to three hours. I like eating every two to three hours. You want to know why? Because I like eating. That's why I stick to this routine. Because you basically eat, you go and film a video like this, you edit it, and you're like, oh, man, sweet. I get to put food in my mouth again. I am a disgusting human being. And there are... There is some scientific benefit to it, right? They compare it to a car engine. The more you use your car, the better it works. I mean, that's not really true with 2022 cars. But you stoke the metabolism fires, right? You keep it ticking over and you're probably going to burn a few extra calories maybe. But all that matters is that you're getting your calories in. If you want to eat three meals a day, eat three meals a day. If you want to do the warrior diet and eat one meal a day, do that. Some people like to do intermittent fasting. There are so many options. You just need to figure out what will work for you. And you may start doing eating every three hours a day and realize, oh, actually, I don't enjoy this. I prefer I go to six, seven smaller meals, but there is no, it's not the Lord of the Rings, right? It ain't one ring fit all. And take it for me. That doesn't tie into that movie or book at all, but you need to figure out what works for you. Tailor make it for you. And it's still out there because people love these lists. 10 things you must do in the gym. And I understand that. I'm a list hound. I'm a list fiend. But no, you do not need to eat every two to three hours. Number five, training in the evening is best. And of course it is. That makes all the sense in the world, right? Once again, from a smart point of view, I suppose is the best way to put it. If you go and train at 6 p.m. and you've got a bunch of food in you, nine times out of 10, you're going to have more energy than if you get up and you go to the gym first thing in the morning and i understand that i'm repeating myself here but these are the questions that people ask if you prefer to go in the morning go in the morning just do it again you can still do progressive overload maybe every now and then when you do go in the afternoon you're like oh my gosh I have so much more strength but at the same time maybe you get exhausted from work like, that can happen to you too so if you do go to the morning before you've tested your brain at your employer of choice you get a better workout so there is no optimal time to work out don't forget that video we did once based on a real video we talked about it where it said something like 12 33 p.m is the best time to work out what does that mean what if you're living in the UK and you move to Australia? Do you have to work out what 12.33 p.m. You know, GMT is and work out in Australian time? It doesn't make any sense. Just go to the gym. That's the best advice ever would anybody give you. Just go to the gym. Number four, go hard or go home. No, don't, don't go home. We've already talked about how important it is to be intense. So if you're going in the gym, yes, you've got to push it. Every now and then, does it make sense to do some heavy lifts? Of course it does. You want to break that muscle down. But don't go home if you only want to go at 70%. Every now and then you won't want to go to the gym. That is the truth of it. But if you decide to stay at home, that is far worse than going for half the time or going at half the effort that you would have done anyway. And as I always say, you'll go to the gym and you'll get into a routine and you'll have a much better session than you were expecting. But go big or go home must be... I mean, look, 
again, it's decent advice. It's decent advice for a beginner or somebody that's struggling to put on gains. But on a more general level, it is so dumb. One of my choices, Steve, well, you could go big. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. What else? Or you could just leave. Come on. Number three is you must do cardio to lose weight. Now, you should be doing cardio because it's good for your heart. Most important muscle in the body. Without that, you can't do squip. And cardio, of course, is going to help you lean up. It's going to help you get abs because you're burning calories. But if you don't want to do cardio and you are adverse to cardio and maybe cardio is against your life goals, you can get in shape or lean up or lower your body fat or drop weight by completely controlling your diet. It's going to be a lot harder because you're going to have to eat less. But there is obviously a possibility, or not a possibility, a way where you can consume less than you're taking in. That's not right. You can burn more. You know what I'm saying, right? Calories in, calories out. Just don't eat that much food. You can lose weight, sat on the catch, playing Nintendo if you're not eating that much food. Now, it'd be quite hard to figure out because, you know, how many calories do you need just to survive and how much you're actually burning just sitting there? It's not going to be a lot. But don't take this as an excuse that you shouldn't do cardio. You should. But you absolutely can do it all by controlling your calories, by controlling your diet, and by controlling your food. Number two is it's better to work out in the gym. Now, I'm going to fly through this one because we actually have got to repetitive time. But if you want to work at home and the alternative is you don't do anything, work out at home. This was another article I read that was like, you know, the pros and cons of working at the gym and working at home. And he got to the home bit as a bullet point. It said, just don't do it. Like the opposite of Nike. I was like, what the flub are you talking about? No, no, no way, man. Work out in your garden, work out on your roof, work out at Auntie Jones, who we talked about earlier, go to a commercial gym. There's no rule here. For goodness sake, do whatever you want. Number one is when it comes to cardio, it must be HIT. And if you don't know, HIT stands for high intensity interval training, which is essentially, say you go on a treadmill, right? You do one minute at a nice pace, and you do another minute going as fast as you can, and so on and so forth. And the alternative to this is steady state cardio. And I don't know why it's still a thing, but in 2022 and pretty much ever since we got into the new millennium, people have been like, hit cardio is the only way and steady state cardio is absolute crap. No, it's not. I actually prefer steady state cardio. I do. I hate hit cardio, mostly because one, it's too hard. <laughs> and two, I don't believe people actually put 100% effort into the 100% effort bit. It's really hard to go at 100%, especially for a prolonged period, because your brain and your body will be actively working against you. But as ever, you have a choice here. That's why bodybuilding and lifting weights is so nice. If you want to do steady states, you do 45 minutes to an hour and just go you know, at a plodding pace, you should do it. And if you want to do the frenetic you should do that as well but there is too much stuff out there that is again it's like go big go home do hit or you're going to burn all your muscles away it's absolute baloney pick the one that appeals to you the most and do that so there you go 10 pieces of good gym advice and don't forget if you did all of these that would work as well that you can completely ignore if it suits your brain and don't forget everybody's got a different brain even though deep down we all crazy now please do like the video share the video and subscribe get the bell ding ding so you know when other videos are going live and if you could check that that would be great because i've definitely got some issues with youtube right now click the video on the screen if you want to watch another one because youtube loves that spam the comment section because youtube loves that as well grillamind.com for assignment for fitness supplements that i genuinely do recommend if you could sign get 10% off in Greg Doucette's Power 13 cookbook on Patreon, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Cameo, got merchandise. It's all in the description down there. Have a look, have a listen. Doesn't make sense. Just use your eyes and see if anything appeals. I appreciate all of the support. I appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully it's helped. And if not, hey ho, never mind. See you soon.